Luke 1, 39-56 is the story of Mary when she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Mary has just found out that she's about to have a baby, a baby that she never expected, and she's going to visit her cousin who she's also just found out is having a baby, her cousin who is old and barren and wasn't expecting to have children either. This is a very special meeting, it's a joyous meeting, so much so that the baby inside Elizabeth, John the Baptist, leaps inside Elizabeth's womb. This brings joy to Mary and she praises God. And the end of this passage is Mary's pouring out of her heart to God, telling him how wonderful it is that he has chosen her and how blessed she is to be able to carry forth uh, his offspring, his son, into the world. The time between Christmas and Good Friday is a natural time to reflect on the life of Jesus. Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Good Friday, we celebrate the death of Jesus. And so it's been the case for hundreds of years that Christians have taken that time and they've said, who is this Jesus? What was his life about? What is his story? And they've used that time specifically in the year to focus on those stories, to understand who Jesus is and what he's done. Because those months between Christmas and Good Friday naturally overlap with the spring, Christians began to call this time of reflection on Jesus and his life Lent. Lent is an old English word and it means spring. And so Christians said, let's use this word Lent to describe this time in the year when we focus on Jesus and what he does. Even though many Christians recognize Lent, not all Christians recognize it in the same way. There are many different traditions, many different practices that Christians have engaged in and continue to engage in as they remember the life and the work of Jesus. Some Christians have ashes marked on their forehead. Uh, some Christians fast and they spend time removing themselves from things of the world. Other Christians take on a new spiritual discipline at this time. At Grace, we're going to go through the entire book of Luke uh, from Jesus' birth until his crucifixion and look at different points along the way to understand who Jesus is, what he does, and how this story helps us to understand what he wants us to do in this world. To begin our journey through Luke, we need to consider Mary. We need to consider who she was and what she was asked to do. Mary was a young girl who was called by God to carry the Son of God in her womb. Never before had this happened, never has it happened since. And when Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, something else extraordinary happens. The baby inside her leaps with joy at the sound of Mary's voice. Why? Because John the Baptist already knows that this is Jesus, that this is the Savior of the world inside of Mary. Mary is beginning to figure that out. And when she understands just a little bit of what that means, she's moved to praise. This prayer of praise called Mary's Magnifica describes an upside down kingdom, backward from the world's perspective. Instead of the proud gaining power in it, they are scattered. Instead of the mighty running the show there, the humble are exalted. In God's kingdom, the hungry are filled, the rich are sent away empty, and the vessel for God's incarnation is a young girl without even a good reputation to her name. This is God's chosen beginning for his son, and this is God's chosen path for salvation. God, who is king of the universe, chose to begin his life on earth in the home of a humble servant. Thank you for beginning this journey with us as we read through Luke during this time of Lent. I encourage you to read through all of the daily devotionals, to stick with us as we look at the entire life of Jesus and try to understand who he was better and how we can live our lives like he lived his. Thank you.